Hi and welcome. Uh, my name is Jerry and uh, this is uh, the first part of a I don't know how many part series. Um, haven't mapped it out yet to see how many parts it will take to get through this whole guitar. Um, but uh, it's a multi-part series on uh, how I modeled this uh, acoustic guitar in Fusion 360. Um, before I go too much further, I want to say that uh, much of what I've learned uh, how to how to model this guitar, I learned by uh, participating in Austin Shaner's Discord group and watching his uh, videos on his YouTube channel. Um, I'll leave links below so that you can check that out. Um, definitely worth worth your time if you're serious about uh, making guitars, whether it's electric or acoustic. Most of Austin's stuff is uh, based around electric guitars, but uh, a lot of it can be applied here, as I did, to an acoustic guitar. So, uh, uh, and the Discord group is, uh, it's amazing. The, there's a lot of very knowledgeable people in that community and they're more than willing to uh, help, help you solve problems, come up with ideas, um, whatever. Um, it's an amazing community. Highly recommend you checking them out. Um, before we get going, I guess a quick tour of, of the guitar that we're modeling here. Um, this is a Dreadnought. Um, I guess it doesn't matter. I, I've modeled it with a walnut uh, neck, uh, a, what's supposed to be a cedar top, cedar bottom, maple sides, a maple veneer on the headstock, and an ebony uh, fretboard um, with uh, horse head inlays. Um, uh, I've modeled the frets and the strings. Um, I downloaded and, and used uh, tuners. Um, I modeled uh, uh, bridge pins, a saddle, and, uh, and the bridge. I, I modeled all of those. Um, I, I modeled a uh, walnut uh, pick guard. Um, I downloaded. I downloaded this uh, um, uh, <laughs> come on. Come up with the name here. Uh, the uh, the button on the bottom, the strap button. Uh, what else? Um, it's got a, a three part laminated uh, heel cap maple and walnut. Um, it's got all the purflins and um, um, my vocabulary bindings. <laughs> uh, purflin and bindings. Um, if we pull the top off of this um, we can take a look at the uh, all the bracing uh, not top, so we'll pull the top. I'll even pull the bottom off, and we can look inside. Um, let's turn off a whole bunch of stuff here. So here we see all the bracing. Uh, that's all modeled. It's all um, radiused along with the top, the top and the bottom. Um, are uh, radius. Uh, the bottom is radius at, uh, I believe, uh, 20 feet, and the top is radius at uh, 28. And of course, those are parameter driven, so they're easy to change. Um, the uh, I modeled the uh, the kerf, uh, the tail block, the head block. Um, what else? Um, I've pulled in all the hardware. It's a bolt-in, bolt-in neck. Um, so we pulled in and modeled the hardware. It's pretty complete. I mean, everything's in this model. Um, even stuff you're not going to make yourself. Um, so basically, that is the tour of the guitar. Um, 
Let's uh, get back in here and turn things on. Well, enough said. I, I don't need to go through anything more on that. So we're going to jump right in uh, to the first part is uh, going to be going over the initial design, the, all the parameters that uh, I defined uh, that go into the modeling of this uh, guitar. And then uh, and uh, the fretboard. We're going to go through uh, modeling the fretboard. Um, that's it. So with that, let's just jump right in. This guitar design is parametric, um, and it becomes important because there's so many uh, variable parts in this design that you can change on the fly. Um, and we're going to go that. So first thing I'm going to do is go through the the parameters that I've set up in order to build this model. Um, there's quite a number of them. Um, just walk down through the list. So the first two are low E scale and high E scale lengths. So, so this just defines your scale length. And this has a, a, a variable scale um, from low E to high E. You can define uh, a variation there. Um, in my case I don't. Uh, my scale length for this acoustic guitar is 25.4. If you want it to be 24.75, you just change these. Um, and of course, if you want a variable scale, you can you can indicate that as you wish here. Um, our nut width is going to be 1.75 inches. Our heel width, um, which really is uh, the width at the sound hole, not at the heel itself. Uh, um, probably a better name for that, but it is what it is. Um, we're going to go two and a quarter inches at the sound hole. Uh, the fretboard thickness is three sixteenths of an inch. Um, the fretboard radius at the nut. So this has a variable radius on the fretboard. You can you can have a, a constant radius that goes the same, like twelve foot radius or a sixteen foot radius from the nut to the heel. Um, or you can have a variable um, where it's say 12 foot radius at the nut and a 16 foot radius at the heel um, if you prefer so uh, fretboard radius nut is the radius you want at the nut we skip down here to fretboard radius at the heel for whatever you want it to be at the heel in my case I've defined it as 12 uh, at the heel I mean 12 inch a 12 inch radius I'm sorry not a foot radius I think I was saying 12 foot radius it's a 12 inch radius at the nut and a 12 a 16 inch radius at the heel tang depth um, is how deep we want to cut um, our slots and uh, for for our frets and tang width is how wide the tang on the fret is um, how, how wide we want to cut the slot for the for the fret. Um, hope I, it makes sense. That, um, it should, I guess. Tang offset is how far we want to uh, extend. Um, that one's a little harder to explain. Here, I'll jump over to the fretboard to, sh to explain what I mean. Um, the tang offset is whether it, it indicates whether we want to cut through or whether we want to just cut to just short of the edge of the fretboard. Um, most acoustics are going to cut through. Um, so um, tang offset is a positive number if you wish to um, cut uh, to, to not cut all the way through the fretboard and it is a negative number if you want to um, cut through um, and what we do is when we when we're going to cut these you'll see when we talk about fretboard that we'll specify negative tang offset in order to cut all the way through headstock angle so this guitar has a uh, a variable uh, angle on the headstock um, it can uh, vary from zero to uh, maybe 15 degrees if you, if you if you exceed certain boundaries the the model will break but 
anything reasonable between um, zero and 15, I, I believe a negative 15 degrees will work fine. Uh, the heel angle, the same thing. So the heel where it connects to the body is also uh, a variable. Um, you can specify the angle you want um, on that as well. Um, for this model, I've chosen uh, negative 11 degrees for the headstock and uh, negative 88.5 is one and a half degrees. Uh, one and a half degree angle is what you'll get at the heel. Uh, tenon width. Um, so the tenon is the this design is a bolt-on neck, so the tenon um, that ex sits inside the, the body, um, that's going to be three-quarters of an inch wide. The tenon is going to be three and an eighth inch tall, and the, t the tenon radius is the curve at the bottom of that. Um, this will all make more sense later. I just want to walk through the... the the parameters right now but uh, so that curve at the bottom is the radius that we want that to be um, it's really a function of width so I guess it, it could have been just 10 and width divided by 2 but um, 10 and bolt positions this is going to specify on that tenon where the bolts where the bolt holes are going to go in relation to the top of the guitar um, two bolt holes um, Distance from the 14th fret to the sound hole. Um, in this design, I'm specifying that is 4.35, but that would be, you know, when you designed your top, where do you put the hole? And, uh, you know, so that's what that is. Tenon depth is how how deep that tenon is, how, how far into the body it's going to extend, three quarters of an inch. Body height at the heel. Um, body height at the tail um, those are kind of self-explanatory right a, a guitar isn't flat it it's smaller at the heel uh, than it is at the at the tail so um, low e fret one and high e fret one are the locations of the first fret um, and the location of the first fret is calculated by the scale length minus the scale length divided by the 12th root of 2. Um, and of course the same calculation for high using high scale length. Uh, so that gives us a location of our first fret multiplier is a calculation I'm back up let me uh, do this I'm going to change uh, let's add in a new temporary uh, let's calculate the location of fret 2 the way you would do it so I'm gonna put fret oops that's not what I want to do I want to add a new variable called fret and we would get that location by taking uh, low E fret 1 uh, divided by the uh, 2 to the power of 1 divided by 12 to 12 root of 2 okay and that would give us, it'll be down here, the location of fret two. Um, this is very calculation intensive and it slows fusion down though. So um, another way to get the location of fret two would be to take uh, the location of fret two. Once we know that, we can take this value, 1.346, and divide it by the location of fret one uh, right here 1.426 and we get a, a constant value and this value is constant irregardless um, if we take multiplier and we put in 
that same calculation for fret 2 and divide it by fret 1, we get this constant, uh, 9 point, uh, 0.943874. Um, and th that, that number doesn't change. I can go up here and change my scale length to, say, 28 if I want to. And I can change the, uh, and you notice that didn't change. And I, I can change the high E scale length to 23. And again, it didn't change. So that is a constant. Um, it doesn't matter what scale length you have, you'll always use this multiplier. Now, um, let me put things back the way they were. I'm going to uh, let me get out of here for a second and I'm going to undo the changes that I did and then go back in. Okay, so uh, we got rid of that. And so rather than put that calculation in here that, that I'd put, um, we're just going to put the constant in here, and that keeps Fusion from doing this calculation every time we reference multiplier. So, uh, so now the way that works is, is when we design the fretboard, uh, that'll get explained a little bit better. But to calculate the position of fret two, we'll take location of fret one times this multiplier to the power of one. And I know <laughs> that's just the multiplier, um, but that'll make more sense in a second. We're going to then take for fret uh, three, we'll take the location of fret one times the multiplier to the power of two. And to get fret four, we will take low E fret one times the multiplier to the power of three. And on down the line until we get to our last fret, or fret 20 in our case. Um, so I'll leave that there and. Uh, We'll talk more about that when we design the fretboard. Heel block width, heel block depth, heel block height. So this just defines the dimensions of our heel block. Tail block width, depth, and height defines the dimensions of our tail block. Bottom and top radiuses. Um, so this is going to define the radius of our top, which is uh, 20 foot in this case, and the radius of the bottom um, I'm sorry, the bottom radius is 20 foot, a 20 foot radius on the bottom and a 28 foot radius on the top. And these are variable, you can specify whatever radius as you like. Um, heel height and heel depth. Um, this is the heel on the neck where it joins. So how tall do we want that heel to be? How close to the bottom of the guitar do we want it to go? Um, um, and heel depth is how thick we want it to be front to back from the body to the headstock. Okay. So that's all of our parameters. As you can see, there's a, a number of variables in this design that you can, so you a lot of control. You can, this, this one design can be modified quite a bit. Um, Not much more to say there. Um, some of these variables, you can modify them a little bit, but if you try to modify them a whole lot, um, you might break the model and you might have to fix something. Um, but for the most part, if you do minor tweaks, uh, these variables can be uh, effective. Okay, that's it for this. Um, fretboard is next. Okay, let's walk through the uh, design of the fretboard. This is based on Austin Shaner's videos uh, on designing electric guitars. The fretboard design isn't any different for an acoustic than it is an electric, so there's not much difference there. There are uh, a lot of things built into this design that uh, I don't use, but I've put them in here in case anybody wants to. Um, the first thing I did is I pulled in a derived um, model that contains just the parameters for the complete guitar design. 
So this is the uh, sketch of the fretboard. Um, if we go in and look at that, um, I'll give you a quick tour of what's going on here and then we'll go show you how we draw it. Um, uh, what we got is each of the frets are uh, calculated based off of our scale model and a multiplier. Um, the first fret is simply the low fret, low E fret one position that we uh, discussed earlier, that I discussed in the parameter section. It's this uh, calculation of low E scale length minus low E scale length divided by 2 to the power of 1 over 12. Each subsequent uh, fret is dimensioned from the previous fret using that low E fret 1 times our multiplier to the power of fret number minus one essentially, um, if that makes sense. So let's look at that multiplier again. That's this value right here. It's a constant that uh, we apply, uh, that we multiply our previous uh, position by um, with a power uh, e equal to the fret number minus one. So. Fret number two is low E fret one times multiplier to the power of one. Fret number three is low E fret one times multiplier to the power of two, etc. down to fret 20. Same concept on the bottom. We dimension the bottom side of the uh, fret to high fret, high E fret one and uh, high E fret 2 is high E fret 1 times multiplier to the power of 1, etc. on down. Um, this line down here is not a fret. This is, this is a line that's going to give me a place to uh, draw in the radius of the sound hole. So this is essentially uh, the distance to the sound hole in effect and we dimension that off of fret number 14 with our value distance 14th to sound hole and we'll use that in a future sketch to as I said uh, cut in our uh, radius so that the fret board fits in around the sound hole The length of the fretboard is, uh, again, it's variable. So there's a low E scale, low E scale length and a high E scale length. So the top line is a dimension to the low E scale. And the, uh, let's see if I can get this dragged down here where we can see it. And uh, the other line is dimension to the high E scale. So if high E scale was different than low E scale, then this would not be a horizontal line over here. Um, it would be angled uh, appropriately. Uh, what else do I want to tell you here? That's really it. Well, let's just jump into how to uh, how to draw this. So let's get out of here. Um, let's hide that and we're going to jump into this sketch down here. I'm going to delete everything I did here and just start from scratch. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a construction line through um, just through the middle here and um, I'm going to dimension that temporarily to my low E fret one scale length. 
and then I'm going to constrain it to the midpoint of uh, our sketch of our of our plane here. So I'm going to take that line and I'm going to make it right there. Okay. Now I'm going to delete that dimension because it'll over constrain us later when I when I get to where we're going. So now I'm going to create a couple of lines here that are not going to be construction lines. I'm going to put one down here. I do not want that constraint there. What I want is a vertical constraint on it. So let's put that on there. And I'm going to dimension this line to my variable nut width. And then I'm going to uh, move that down here and I'm going to constrain that on its midpoint. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Let's undo that. We're going to take this line, the midpoint to there. Then we're going to draw another line on the other end. And we're going to dimension that. Uh, actually, we're not going to dimension that. Um, but we are going to constrain it to the midpoint here. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to take two more lines and we're going to draw these out here. We're just going to set them at an arbitrary angle for now. Put that one there. We'll put this one over here. Um, and then we're going to dimension those. Dimension here to here. We, want, we don't want to do it at an angle. We want to do it straight up. And the top one's going to be low E scale length uh, I'm not sure why I did that hold on let's do this let's trim this off of here this off of here this off of here and this off of here and now let's go put a dimension here to here to low E scale length. Okay, and then we're going to put a dimension down here to high E scale length. Why are you doing that? Uh, shouldn't we be doing that? Um, okay, let's get rid of this for a minute because I think it's causing me a problem. So we can get rid of that, and then we're going to get our dimension on here of low E scale. I mean, high E scale length. And now we can draw a line from here to here, I think. Um, and we can constrain that on its midpoint. There. That's what I was looking for. Okay, so now we're going to start putting in our frets and we put those in as construction lines we're going to do this we'll start with our first one we're just going to draw a line here i don't want any constraints so i'm going to put it in an angle so it doesn't put any constraints on it and then i'm going to dimension the top side of that line with the nut end of the fretboard to my low e scale fret one location right there then I'm going to dimension the bottom side, not the line to the line, but the point to the point, but to high E scale, fret one. 
Okay, and then I'm going to draw my next fret in. And dimension, oops, I don't want any, I don't want any constraints on this. I'm going to delete that uh, constraint and then dimension this to this as low E scale fret one times multiplier to the power that up caret is power of one. And we'll do the same on the bottom. High E fret one times multiplier to the power of one. Okay. And then we're going to continue that on down to until we have uh, 20, 20 frets in here. Um, What I'm going to do is just draw a bunch of lines in here. Give me kind of a head start. Yeah, we'll start with those and then we'll come back. Um, any constraints that were put on automatically, we're going to delete. We don't want those in there. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab this one and I'm going to copy everything except for the number one at the end. And then I'm going to go put a constraint on here, here. I'm going to paste that in and say, Two. So fret three is multiplier times multiplier to the power of th two. And I'll just go down the line here on the top doing those. Control V. Multiplier of uh, uh, th three this time. Fret four. Fret five is, I mean, fret uh, one, two, three, four, five. This would be four. Now I gotta go back and see if I made a mistake. No, three. Okay, that's what I thought. And this is two. Okay, and then I've got one more line left here, so I'm gonna go put that in here. Control B. Um, and this is six, so that's five. Um, and I can keep going to 20 and that way I wouldn't have to copy and paste that thing again. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and jump down here. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to get in here. I'm going to copy this high E fret one times multiplier all the way up to the caret, the power symbol. And then I'm going to start dimensioning the bottoms of these lines. Fret number uh, three, let's see, this would be two. Three. Four. And five. Now we have frets uh, one through six in here. And uh, now I'm just going to quickly go down and, and put in the next 20. Um,
Okay, there's all uh, 20 frets. Now we're going to put in a, a line for the uh, to define where the sound hole is. We're going to put uh, that in here. We're going to make that horizontal. And we're going to dimension it to the heel width. Oops, failed to solve what happened. So, oh, because there's a constraint here that doesn't belong here, maybe it's causing the problem. Delete that. Let's also change this to a done. And let's try that again. See if I'll heal width. There. So you see now that that has created our angles um, from the nut to the to the saddle. Uh, it's not fully constrained for some reason. Oh, here we have to put the distance in. That's what it is. So now we're going to dimension this to the fourteenth fret. Um, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So we're going to take that and we're going to say uh, sound distance to fourteenth to sound hole. And when we did that, that fully constrained our fretboard. So that is our first sketch that lays out our frets. Um, so then finish that. And I added the sketch in just to demonstrate building that. So now I'm going to delete that sketch and go back to mine. No, the next so thing we did was is we're going to uh, we're going to uh, extrude the fretboard, um, and we're going to extrude that to fretboard thickness. You can see here, fretboard thickness is our parameter for extruding that up. Okay, cancel that. Then we're going to create an angle on plane on that uh, line we defined as our sound hole location. We're also going to create a plane on our nut end down here, and also an angle on plane at 90 degrees. Here I can open those up so you can see. Uh, 90 degrees, cancel that, and 90 degrees on the nut end, cancel that. Okay, now we can draw our uh, sketches for the heel radius and the nut radius um, that will allow us to cut the radius into the top of the fretboard. Um, they're going to look something like this uh, with a radius across the bottoms um, and then we'll loft between these to cut the top of the, the fretboard. Um, let's get this up here um, and let's uh, we're going to back the timeline up so that I can play with these without messing up the timeline. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the sketch. I'm going to open the sketch and then I'm going to turn off the fretboard sketch and I'm going to, I'm going to delete the geometry that I've drawn in here so that I can redraw it to show you how I created it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is turn on my bodies. Um, and these lines are already projected and I didn't delete them. So I'm going to select this top line and this bottom line and I'm going to project those in. 
um, I've already projected them so I'm not going to do it again but um, then once I do that I can turn off my bodies then the next thing I'm going to do is I want to draw a three-point arc and I'm going to temporarily just attach it to these points to it on this one here um, that just kind of constrains it for me while I get it dimensioned so that it doesn't uh, blast around in space. <laughs> Let's get the dimension on there. And that's going to be our uh, fretboard radius at heel, which is, I don't know why it always sticks it up there in space, but that's 16 inches. Once I have that, I'm going I'm to gonna remove these uh, constraints now. I'm gonna move it down here, and then I'm going to put a tangency on to this line. Okay, and then I'm going to draw. Um, let's make that a construction line. We're going to put a construction line from here to here, from here to here. Let's make that a little bigger. Um, and then I'm going to make this coincident to this and this coincident to this. And then I'm going to trim off the top of those construction lines. And then lastly, I'm going to draw line from here. I'm going to go up a half an inch. And I didn't want that to be construction. Then I'm going to draw a line across at uh, 90 degrees, uh, 180 degrees I guess is what it is. And then I'm going to draw that down to this point. Then I'm going to make this parallel. So I have um, perpendicular constraints on this side and a parallel constraint on this side, and I get a square. And uh, that's pretty much it. I'm just not sure why these construction lines aren't constrained, but. because it doesn't have that on there. There we go. So that's it. Um, I'll finish that and uh, turn back on my bodies. And you can see now that that radius is on the face of the uh, fretboard and we'll use that to loft. And the nut side. Let me undo all of that. So got that all undone um, and got the timeline back out here. Let's back that back up to here. And the uh, nut radius is the same drawing uh, just at uh, the heel. I mean at the, the nut radius fretboard radius nut instead of heel. Um, once we have those, then we can bring back in our body and we do a loft finish sketch between those two, a cut loft. Okay. And now we have our radius fretboard. Next up, we're going to create another plane. This is uh, an offset plane. Um, it's uh, our fret grid plane. Uh, we're going to put this out above the fretboard and we're going to project our frets up to this so that we can then 
cut them down. Right now the frets are defined on the bottom of the fretboard, so this is going to get them up hovering above the fretboard and then we're going to cut them down in. Um, we're also going to use this plane to do our dots, um, which uh, we're going to do first. So created a, a sketch for the fretboard inlay. Um, these would normally be dots. Uh, I used horse heads, uh, it's the same concept regardless. So um, once I had my drawings in for my dots on, on this sketch uh, where I wanted them, um, let's open up that sketch. So I'm pretty sure what I did was is I used the fretboard, turn off the body, and I placed these, you know, relative to the fret where I wanted them. Um, then I extrude them oops, finish sketch. down into the uh, fretboard okay and what I did was I did an extrude to uh, object which is the top of this fretboard so um, it extrudes them with that curve that we put on there that radius so uh, and then I added a sixteenth of an inch to actually cut it down into. So that offset here is 0 0.0625, cuts it down into the fretboard with the radius. Um, then I create a um, surface offset at the bottom of those. So again, because I, because I used a surface offset, uh, those are radiused. And then from those, I use a thicken to bring those uh, to extrude that uh, the inlay back up to the surface. Um, and again, <clears throat> because because of that surface offset, it's it uh, they're they're radiused as well. Okay, um, so. So now we can model our frets. Um, we're going to create another sketch on that uh, fret grid plane that we created, that offset plane. <clears throat> um, this offset plane that we defined, I don't know if I said earlier, but we, we raised that above the fret, the fretboard thickness times two, so it's um, Basically, it's half an inch because our I think I think our fretboard thickness is uh, um, a quarter of an inch, so that brings it up a half an inch. I don't know how important it was to tell you that, but I did. Because <laughs> um, when we when we extrude, we're not going to use that. We're going to use two objects, so. Um, let's open up our sketch. Uh, let's turn off our body and uh, here again I'm going to delete everything I've done here uh, so I can show you how I drew it. So goodbye. <laughs> We're going to turn on our fretboard sketch and we're going to um, project our frets. Two, three, oops, I didn't get that P in there. Project, so I brought my project and then I'm going to select all my frets. Don't select the sound hole, just the frets.
Okay. Um, so project those in. And then we can turn off the fretboard. And we're going to bring in our body. And we're going to project in these two outside lines. Okay. Then we want to turn all those into construction lines. And then what we need to do is uh, set up our tang offset. Uh, we, we want to make sure that the tang cuts all the way through the body um, if, we're, if we're doing it to the outside. Uh, if, we, if we were just to cut based on this architecture, it would leave an artifact um, that I can't show you because I'm, I, I'm not set up for that yet or and not going to be <laughs> um, but just trust me that uh, if you want your tangs to cut all the way through um, you need to do this to get that to happen and the same mechanism we're going to put in place is what allows you to not ha to have the, the tang come up short inside uh, so that it doesn't go all the way through the fretboard so what we're going to do is we're going to create an offset off of these two lines and we're initially going to do it to the inside. Um, I'll explain that in a minute. Tang offset. Okay, so we brought that inside. We say okay and we're going to go get the other side and offset it to tang offset. Oops, what did I do? Oops, not tang depth. Delete that, tang offset. Okay, so you see they're both offset to the inside. Um, and we're going to want them on the outside, but initially want them on the inside so that we can draw our frets in here. We've, we've projected in the lower uh, frets but we need these fret we need new lines that will be tied to these offset lines so that we can extend them and retract them so I'll show you what that means here um, I'm going to draw a line we're going to grab this line at the intersection and draw it to the intersection and we're going to do that all the way down the line You want to make sure that you're hitting that intersection between this line, the offset line, and the fret line. You'll know if you miss because it won't be blue. Like if I miss here, it won't be uh, constrained. So you'll know that you missed. Um, but do be careful you don't tie it to these outside lines. Make sure you're tying it to that intersection of the inside line. Okay. There we have it. Um, Next, I'm going to take these two outside lines and make them construction lines as well, because the only thing we care about is these frets. So make that a construction line. And then we're going to go edit the offset. Um, now, assuming if you, wanted, if you wanted frets that don't go all the way to the edge of the fretboard, you'd leave this this way. But if you want them to go outside, you're going to set it to your minus ting offset. And the reason we draw them on the inside is, is because if we drew them on the outside, then there would be no intersection with the fret to connect that. But you see now that um, now when we move it to the outside, it's uh, constrained to that line, so it, it brings the uh, fret with it. I'm edit this one, send it to the outside. And that's it. That's it for the sketch. We're going to finish sketch.
turn this up like this turn on our bodies and then we're going to do a thin extrude um, So instead of the normal extrude, we're going to use this thin extrude, um, and that's going to allow us to choose to uh, set a, a wall center, a wall location, which we want to be the center, and our offset and our width. Missing profile. We've got to go down through here and select each one of these frets. distance to to the object okay um, to a tang depth which we've set in our parameters and for a width of what we set our tang width to be and then this we need to make sure we set to center if you have it set to side one or two it won't be in the right place so you need uh, it uh, to center that cut on that line Now, because we did a uh, two object, these will be cut in with the radius in the bottom of that slot, um, which is what we want. Click OK. Turn off that sketch, and there we have our frets cut in. Okay, so the last thing we want to do is uh, cut in our our radius here for the sound hole. Um, so that's just uh, another sketch. Let's turn off the body, and all we're going to do is put an arc. We're going to project in this line, this line from the uh, fretboard and that line we drew that is our distance to sound hole and then we're going to put an arc in here that is the radius of our sound hole um, that should be parameterized it's not so you could have a parameter for sound hole diameter and then this could be sound hole diameter divided by two um, for whatever reason i haven't used that okay so that's that uh, as long as that's constrained this will work so then we're going to do an extrude on that oops let's turn up the body just a simple extrude up with a cut to cut out that for the hole so that's pretty much it um, that's our completed fretboard um, just to give you a quick look at what it looks like, the variable, um, I'm not going to demonstrate the variable uh, radius. That's pretty obvious. But, um, and again, I don't know why you would do this on acoustic guitar. I guess you, there's some reason to do this. I'm not enough of a guitarist to tell you why you'd want to do this, um, but you do have the option. So let's go over to our parameter file and let's change our parameters on the scales so we're going to take the the low scale let's say let's knock that down to 23 and let's take the high scale and let's bump that up to say 27 and we're going to say okay and save that and once that's saved when we come back over here it's going to tell us we're out of update so we're going to click up here to update the parameters and watch here Hopefully I did it right. <laughs> Takes a long time to update all this geometry after a change like that. So bear with it if you would. And there you go. There's your variable geometry on your low and high.
E. So pretty fancy. Um, I don't think I'll ever use that, but it's in the model. Um, so there you have it. So that's it for the for the fretboard. Um, So that's it for part one. Um, next up is modeling the uh, neck and the variable geometry uh, headstock. So stay tuned. See you soon.